Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be They Worship the Dragon, Part 6. You know, I'm doing a lot of background work on this because if you lay a good foundation, by the time I get to the end, everything will make so much sense. I believe this is Part 6. This is going to be on trees. Now, the key to understanding the New Testament is an understanding of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation of the New Testament. And how can you understand how Satan is going to trick people into worshiping him as explained in the book of Revelation, you know, taking the mark of the beast. I mean, let's face it. Genesis chapter 3. He tricked Eve. And he's been, he tricked Israel into falling away from the Lord. I mean, you know, let me explain something to you. Gals, you may not understand this so much, but... If you have, for example, a football game and you got a quarterback uh, that has a couple of good receivers and, you know, he, he could always throw the ball and he's got a, a, a running back that just blasts through all the, you know, every time he runs he gets, you know, three and a half, four yards. I mean, let's face it. Uh, you know, if you're winning all your games, you don't change you don't change the plan. And, you know, that's basically how it works. Uh, gals, if you've got a, uh, a recipe that everybody loves, uh, why mess with it? You know? I mean, if it's, if it's almost perfect, why would you change it? You don't. Well, Satan's got a plan, and it works for most people. And... Let's face it, you know, he's not going to change the plan because he doesn't need to. It works. But uh, we're going to take a look at trees. Now, in Genesis 3, we were talking about the um, tree of good and evil. Now, sometimes trees are talking about a plant that grows in the ground that has a trunk and branches and leaves. Other times, it's what is known as a figure of speech, which represents something. So, I mean, I've mentioned it before, you know, figure of speech. Um, you know, guys look at a good-looking girl and say, wow, that girl's a fox, you know. Obviously, she doesn't have four legs and a tail. That's not what they're talking about. So, that's a figure of speech. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 31. In verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month of the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, and to his multitude. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Now, what's a cedar? It's a type of tree. Uh, the cedars of Lebanon, they were very famous. They used those trees, the actual trees, logs, to build the temple in Solomon's time. Um, the king of Tyre, I believe it was Hiram, Actually, he had some of his workmen cut the trees and deliver them to Solomon to help him out. So, behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Syria, uh, cedar is an interesting wood because it doesn't uh, takes forever for it to rot, and it's not bug res it's uh, bug resistant. 
You ever seen, um, gals, you ever seen uh, a bag with cedar chips and they say you put it in your closet and it helps keep the bugs away? Yeah. And cedar is a very unusual type of wood. I, right now I live in South Florida, so I'm kind of an expert on bugs. We got, uh, Florida's a swamp. I mean, it's just anytime you got water, you're going to have bugs. I lived in Colorado for a few years, and it was actually very nice, the dry climate. We didn't have the bugs. But down here, we got all kinds of bugs. It's, it's a bug's paradise. So that's why I know about cedar chips. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high nate stature and of an high stature and his top was among the thick bowels the waters made him great now in the book of revelation uh, when it talks about the beast that rose from the sea well let's take a reading of that see the bible has a lot of symbolism Turn real quick to Revelation 17, 15. We're only going to read this one sentence. And he saith unto me, The waters, the waters, which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So when the Bible in Revelation talks about the beast that rise out of the, rises out of the sea, then they show this dragon thing with seven heads or whatever coming out of the water. Well, that's the problem with uh, those stupid pictures. They put a preconceived idea into your mind. And, and the Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for doing that kind of stuff. But it has nothing to do with that. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The whore of Babylon sits on top of the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Languages, not uh, speaking gibberish in a Pentecostal church. So behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with the shadowing shroud and of and high nature and his top was among the thick boughs the waters made him great the deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants now they could be talking about food crops here or his uh you know if, if he's considered a, a tree of lebanon you know, it could be talking about his um, garden, which could be all the people around him that he had conquered. So take your pick. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running up round about his plants and set out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. Now in case you don't know it, the Assyrian Empire conquered northern Israel. Israel and Judah split. They had a civil war, sort of, uh, Solomon's son, they, uh, the northern tribes of Israel came to Solomon's son after Solomon died and said, make our taxes lighter. And he decided, no. I'm, you, you think my father's taxes were light and, <laughs> or uh, heavy? I'm going to make yours even heavier. And they said, you know what? We're out of here. So they took off. So they split from the Jerusalem as being the capital. And they set up their capital in Samaria. 
Remember when Jesus went to Samaria, 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 spoke to the Samaritan woman at the well? Yeah. Well, the Assyrian Empire came and conquered Samaria, took them into captivity. Uh, they left some people on the land, but they took a lot of the people out of the land and, you know, took them as slaves. Well, afterwards, the Babylonians came along. And you can read about that in the book of Daniel. Uh, they conquered Assyria. They conquered what was left of Judah and Jerusalem and uh, took them captive for 70 years. And then after 70 years, they returned, Judah returned to Jerusalem and rebuilt it. You can read about that in Ezra. You can read about that in Nehemiah. And, uh, but as Israel never returned back to their land. And when the Assyrian Empire collapsed, they spread out in all directions. So, what's this deal about the Assyrians, right? Verse 5, Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations." You see, this is figures of speech. It's symbolism. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Verse 12. I mean, I'm sorry, verse 8. Pay attention. Very important here. Pay attention. All right, verse 8. The cedars, now remember, God said that uh, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 8, the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. What's the garden of God? The garden of Eden, right? The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs. And the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Verse 9, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God, envied him. What are the trees of Eden? They have to be family trees, right? So that all the trees of Eden, I mean, you know, here it is, it's talking about the garden of God, and then it specifically says Eden. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his, of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Now let's face it, people. Do, do, do trees have envy? Do they have emotions? No. These are figures of speech and what they call parallelism. Now, if you want to read about uh, the Assyrian and Babylonian captivities, you can read the book of Kings, you can read the book of Chronicles, you can read the book of Jeremiah. Um, I can't, you know, it, it would take hours to go over these things I tell you about the Babylonian captivity. This is why I encourage people, read the Old Testament. You know, Satan's plan started in Genesis chapter 3. I mean, let's face it. You know, and it continues all throughout the Bible where he tries to lead people astray from the Lord. All right, let's go to the book of Judges. And we're going to 
show you some uh, where they do parallelism. All right, parallelism concerning uh, trees. Let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 9, and verse 1. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel, now his very name, J-E-R-J-E-R-U-B-B-A-A-L, his name has the word Baal or Baal in it. Uh, you know, people will argue and saying, oh, you're pronouncing this word wrong. Well, you know what? How do you pronounce T-H-E? I've heard English teachers say the. I've heard English teachers say the. Caribbean, Caribbean. Tomato, tomato. Potato, potato. You know, what can I tell you? But his name has the word B-A-A-L. And that word means Lord. And the thing is, it became so associated with Satanism that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said, don't call me that anymore. So when you see this guy's name, he, his parents or whatever named him after basically a satanic god. Baal or Baal. I've heard it pronounced both ways. What can I tell you? So pay attention to that when you read the Bible. B-A-A-L is, I've never seen it mean a good thing. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are threescore and ten persons, that's seventy, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your flesh and your bone and flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem unto all these words, and their hearts were uh, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said he is our brother, and they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver. That's basically one piece of silver for every one of the other brethren, right? And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal, B A A L, Berif. Now, if memory serves me correctly, um, Baal. Berith means a covenant with Baal, making an agreement or a contract with Baal, Satanism. A contract with Satanism. So here it is, they got a temple to, to Satanism. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Berith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. You know what vain means? Worthless. And he went unto his father's house at Oprah, no, not Oprah Winfrey, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubabel, Jerubabal, being threescore and ten persons upon one stone. So here it is, this guy hires a bunch of people, goes to his father's house and kills the, uh, the sons of his father. Does that sound like something Satan would do? Oh, yeah. Notwithstanding, yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the midst of, uh, stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice and cried, and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. Listen carefully. Verse 8. He's going to tell a parable. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, They said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. In other words, be our ruler. Okay? 
The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said, Now do olive trees speak? No. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God man and go to be promoted over the trees? Now the olive tree was um, uh, a symbol of northern Israel. Verse 10. And the trees said to the fig tree, now the fig tree was a symbol of Judah. And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, the grapes, right? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. Now what's a bramble? Well, in British English, a bramble is a noun. It's a prickly, which means it's got uh, thorns, a prickly scrambling vine or shrub especially a blackberry or other wild shrub of the rose family. In other words, it's got thorns, it's a vine or a shrub. It's just a little, you know, tiny little thing. Um, it's a rough, tangled, prickly shrub with thorns. Get the idea? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, and that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dwelt well with Jerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to to the deserving of his hands. For my father fought for you and my and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain or killed and have slain his sons three score and ten persons upon one stone and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out of Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out of the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. In other words, let Abimelech destroy the, uh, let them all kill each other. You know, it's payback for what they did. Here it is, Jerubbabel uh, saved them from the Midianites, which were, you know, they were at attacking these people. And then how does this guy, how do, these, how do the people repay the guy that fought for them? They kill all his sons. Except for, you know, well, Jotham and this other one, right? And Abimelech. Verse 21. And Jotham ran away and fled went, and went to beer, beer, B-E-E-R. I wonder what they drank in beer. Never mind. And Jotham ran away and fled, went to beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt, dealt treacherously with Abimelech that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come, and their blood be lain upon Abimelech their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. All right, so you get the general idea. So what are these cedars? Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 31 and verse 9. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to verse 8 so we don't lose the thought. 
The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he hath has shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height. I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains, and in all the valleys his branches are fallen and his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. To the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all that drink water, for they are all delivered unto death, to the nether parts of the earth. What's the nether part of the earth? Probably hell, right? To the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. Now, that doesn't sound good, does it? No. Now, you want to hear an example of uh, parallelism? Now, we just read about uh, to the nether parts of the earth in the midst of the children of men and them that go down to the pit. Let's read the next verse. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that uh, when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. You know, to mourn somebody's death, not, not you know, morning, afternoon, night, evening, no. I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrain the floods thereof and the great waters were stayed and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him and all the trees of the field fainted for him I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden the choice and best of Lebanon all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth they also went down into hell with them, unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, this is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. So here it is, it tells you the nether parts of the earth, the pit, hell, talks about the grave. Now, the word hell, uh, sometimes it means the burial spot on the earth where your body's laid. Other times it talks about the abode, the place of the dead. You got to read the context. Then there's another time hell is translated where it talks about where the fallen angels are in, in chains of darkness. Okay, now as far as I know, angels live forever unless the Lord destroys them. Uh, be honest with you, I don't know if annihilation or forever and ever uh, punishment is true. Um, I could argue both ways, so there might be different conditions for different ones. So, all right, well, this is almost 30 minutes. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. Please stay tuned for the next one. All praise and glory to Jesus in his precious name. Amen.